90 Day Fiance star Jeffrey Paschal wants to keep his legal battle going as he's set to argue a motion to get a new trial. It's all set to happen tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. Our cameras will be there in that Tennessee courtroom. You'll see it all live right here on this show. Now, after that two-day-long jury trial, you might remember Jeffrey Paschal was found guilty of the crimes brought against him, kidnapping, domestic assault, and interference with emergency calls. Sentenced to spend 18 years in prison for those crimes. Now, ahead of tomorrow's hearing, I had a chance to speak with his attorney, Greg Isaacs. You've seen him before. He's come on this show as a guest. And I talked with Greg about some of the issues that came up during the trial that he is citing in this motion to the court to grant his client a second chance, essentially. Let's take a look. Greg, thank you for making the time with me today. Um, first of all, let's talk about the various different bases that you listed in your motion for this new trial. Um, it seems like there are various grounds you're citing, but what do you think is the biggest one, the one that has the most, most teeth, I should say, that you'll be arguing to the court? Well, Julie, uh, we think that they are all viable arguments uh, that are contained in the motion for new trial, which is basically the foundation uh, for Jeffrey's appeal to the Tennessee Court of Appeals. But the one that we are, are most interested in, we think has uh, maybe the most viable, is when Ms. Chapman, uh, after a break, uh, the lunch break, uh, in, totally unresponsive to one of my questions, uh, indicated in recross that this was not the first time uh, that this had happened before. Referring to abuse, uh, we immediately objected, uh, moved for a mistrial out of the presence of the jury. Uh, but that, we think, was uh, significant and uh, could have been uh, the turning point uh, of the trial. And I, that's funny, I had that circled on the motion here. Number six in your vehemence, Greg, is, is exactly what you're saying. There, the failure to notify you that they were gonna introduce these prior bad acts as we know them to be, right? So to be clear, there was no notice given by the state prior to trial that they were gonna try to introduce prior bad acts under some exception. Uh, exactly, and, and basically what Ms. Ms. Chapman did was she got in stealth 404B uh, with no notice apparently to the prosecutors, no notice uh, to uh, the defense. And, you know, 404B, as you know, Julie, can be uh, significant, it can be problematic, and it can be dev devastating in the course of a trial. And, you know, the, the problem with that was that issue that we have raised in our motion for a new trial. One, we are completely entitled under Tennessee law, like most jurisdictions throughout this country, uh, to pretrial notice of 404B. Uh, and then there has to be a hearing to determine uh, if the evidence of the prior bad act is admissible by clear and convincing evidence. Uh, so we were denied that, that procedural and substantive due process pretrial uh, to contest this allegation. Uh, basically, when did it happen? How did it happen? Where did it happen? This was done in the context of, of a very significant cross-examination where uh, she was being asked about uh, the photographs that allegedly depicted her injuries. And uh, so in the, the, the heat of that uh, very measured, focused cross-examination, she completely uh, went off the reservation. But that's one that we think is a very viable motion uh, issue that we've included in our motion okay so the motion has been filed greg isaacs was kind enough to preview with us what he's going to be arguing tomorrow before the court um so this is going back to the trial court where this happened so this motion for a new trial is different from an appeal so just want to make that very clear this is all um, kind of under the umbrella of what you might hear called post-conviction relief. After the conviction has been had, as we know occurred in this case, he's been found guilty of those crimes. He's trying to get some legal relief and saying, Judge, there were errors in my trial. It wasn't fair for these reasons. And uh, Greg Isaacs talked a little bit about that. Our interview went on a little longer, and you'll see more of it uh, in tomorrow's show as well.
Um, but the main thing is he's saying the jury heard some things they shouldn't have heard. And that was unfair to my client. So we'll see what happens 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. That'll be heard.